face, it's Kat here, and you guys know me as this colorful, pastel, floral, princess, fairy girl that I like to pretend that I am now. But did you know that back in the day, I was a ultra mega emo kid? And I'm not talking about like, oh, she listened to rock music and wore black. No, like, I was emo, my name was Katrina Corruption, I lived in There's No Simply for the Dead Florida, and I was swear that I was going to marry Ronnie Radke. That was who I was, and I love it, and I miss it very much. But I've just been very nostalgic for those days lately, and I feel like a lot of people have from what I've seen on the internet with people having emo nights and just everyone's just super nostalgic for their emo days. So I was like, you know what? I never got to live to my fullest emo potential because I had no idea how to do makeup. I didn't know what I was doing back then. We didn't do brows, we didn't do any of that. And like I thought about doing how I did my makeup in high school tag, but like all I did was wear powdered foundation and eyeliner and that would just be no fun so I thought today I would turn myself into the ultimate emo self that I wanted to be so I'm gonna go from this kawaii cuteness to my emo dream girl that I always wanted to be so if you want to see how I get that look please keep watching all right first things first I need to change this shirt this isn't gonna work hold on Alright, I am back and I've switched into my all-time favorite band tee that I've ever owned, ever. That is my Escape the Fate shirt with the original lineup on it. We got Ronnie, we got Brian, we got Robert, we got Omar, we got Max over there. And uh, this is one of my most prized possessions because if you know me, Escape the Fate was my all-time favorite band back in the day. But only old ETF, I would not listen to anything with Craig Mabbitt. And I'm not going to lie to this day, I still haven't. I know they buried the hatchet, I just... I don't know, I'm still kind of emo and petty, and I will only listen to Dying Is Your Latest Fashion and There's No Simply For The Dead EP. But, I love this shirt, I rarely wear it because it's just very special to me, but it is perfect for today because I need to channel all of my inner, younger, inner emo self. So, that's done, but there's something I really gotta do, that I really don't wanna do. But it's very important to this whole look and the whole emo aesthetic, and that is, I have to straighten my hair. I haven't straightened my hair in probably two years, and that's like once every, I think I straighten my hair like once every three years, to be honest. I rarely straighten my hair. I have too much of it, and now I have to tame this mane and straighten it, so I will be right back. Alright, so my hair is now completely straightened and I have removed all other makeup that I had on before because I cannot have girly pink pastel makeup on when I'm trying to be emo. And I'm going to clip back my hair with this, this very emo appropriate hair clip. It's got some blood splatter. It's got a butcher's knife, you know, super cute. I'm going to go in with a primer, which is something I never used ever back in the day because who needed that back then? No one. Did it even exist? Did we even have primer? We probably did have primer back in 2008 or 2007. But I'm going to apply this all over my face. And now that the face is primed and super smooth again to make it look like the overexposure from the flashlight of your camera into your mirror when you took your selfies back in the day. Because yes, that's how we had to take our selfies with our normal camera in a mirror. And sometimes the flash just, you know, completely covered our face. Or we had the upper angle where the sun just literally blurred out entire face, so it was just nothing. So now that we have blurred our pores, it is time to get this all covered. And I'm surprised because back in the day, I didn't actually wear foundation. I thought that powder was foundation and I used a translucent powder to cover my entire face. Now luckily, I am still just as pale as I was back in the day. Still as pale and still ghost-like, so that works out. This shade is actually a little bit tinier, lighter than I am because I have been out in the sun quite a bit. I went to Disney, so I have a little bit of a tan. But, you know, I want to be as pale as I can to live out my best emo life. So I'm just going to cover my face and go down my neck, which is again, nothing I ever did because who blended in your foundation to match back then? No one. No one did. No one was making. No one was matching anything. And now I'm going to do something else that I never did back then because who knew how to do this stuff? And that was apply concealer as highlight and highlight the upper points of my skin and get rid of those lower bag lines. Which actually, I really didn't have these back then. I wasn't as bad. I mean, I had a little bit of them because I never slept because I was on Tumblr all night and then I would 
wake up at freaking four in the morning to straighten my hair every day because I was insane. But you know, just just emo things. Just you know, like you can't be emo if your hair's not straight. How dare I go to school with any wavy type hair? Just how dare I? There is no way that would have been done. But again. I don't get the point actually of me straightening my hair every day because I live in Florida and literally the humidity would kill it in five seconds and completely destroy everything I had worked so hard for. It was pointless, but again, I woke up every day at four in the morning to make sure I could straighten my hair before I had to get on the bus for school because I'm a crazy person and I would literally like cry if I couldn't straighten my hair. I would get upset. I literally went back on my Tumblr and there's like 50 posts of me like, I didn't straighten my hair today. I look so ugly. Oh my God. God, if they can imagine seeing me now, they'd be like, what is wrong with you? I'm going to use something I did use back in the day, and that is the NYC Translucent Powder. Still my all-time favorite powder for setting everything. I'm going to use this to set under my eyes and my forehead as a bake, as you would say, which is something I never, ever, ever did back in the day, because literally I thought powder was foundation, and I just put this all over my face, even though it literally did nothing. And even if I wore foundation, it was like that triangle CoverGirl foundation where literally everything didn't match and it was like not my skin tone. So, yay me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so pale. I have to use I have to use a powder game translucent when it was translucent powder and I was just putting on my face that was doing nothing for me. Good job, Kat. Good job, Katrina Corruption. Good job. So I'm going to let that sit and bake. And I'm going to do my eyebrows, which is something... I never did back in the day. What were eyebrows? No one had eyebrows. And if you did, they were like drawn on super cartoony. Like like no one did their brows and it's a nightmare. Like I'll show pictures of my brows. Here. Oh God, it was awful. I hated it. Like literally I'll look back on pictures and I'm like, oh you know, it wasn't that bad. And then I see my brows and I'm like, it was that bad. Oh my God. But I'm just using Anastasia's dip brow right now. To draw in, I shave off half my brows so I to get whatever shape I want to. So I'm going to attempt to do kind of a thinner brow today than I normally would. I don't want a thick full brow, and I feel like a thin brow fits the emo aesthetic. But like I don't want something I don't want to take my eyebrows to be the star of the show. I want my black eyeshadow, black and red eyeshadow to be. So I'm just going to do a quick little eyebrow. Put on my brows. So weird to think that there was a time we didn't do eyebrows, that like this wasn't the most important thing on our face. That we were okay just walking around being untamed. I mean I got them waxed, but I never really got them shaped appropriately. They looked like triangles, just like giant triangles on my head. Didn't work, got the Triforce as my eyebrows. Ooh. Now that eyebrows are on, I'm just going to set the rest of my face with my powder so it stays because I can't lose my ghostly, ghostly skin. Gotta be pale and dead inside and outside for this look. Oh my god, I honestly still love being pale, like, that's no joke. Pale for life, I don't think I would ever want a tan. I love being pale. Makes me feel like I'm a vampire, which is like my favorite. I always wanted to be a vampire. I used to like watch True Blood all the time and just like, yep, that's what I want to be. I'm gonna wipe off the excess powder, which is nothing I ever did before. Because I said I wear the powder as the foundation and there's actually pictures where you can see the powder. Like literally, it's just on my face, like it's visible. And I'm just like, cat, why? Why was that you? Why did you do that to yourself? Who let you out of the house like that? All right, so we are going to move on to the most exciting part of this, and that is the eyeshadow and eyeliner. The most important things to any emo person in the world is your black eyeliner and your red eyeshadow. And I remember trying to find the perfect red eyeshadow back in the day. It was like impossible. No one had a red eyeshadow. And the only one I had was this one from Hot Topic. I remember it was like this duo. It came with a red eyeshadow and it came with a black glittery eyeshadow. And I had that red eyeshadow from like my freshman year of high school until my junior year of college. And I remember when I lost it, I was so upset, even though it was probably really bad to even put on my face. But 
It was so nostalgic for me. It was like the lid was broken. It was almost gone, but like that red eyeshadow was everything to me. And so now I have this journey of just buying a million red eyeshadows to try to find the perfect red to relight that one because I want the perfect Gerard Ray eyeshadow. But I still haven't found the best red or one that was that same as that Hot Topic one. Rest in peace, red eyeshadow. But today, we're going to do a eye look that I always swore to my mom that I was gonna wear to prom. I did not end up wearing it to prom, but I still want to do this look so bad. It is the eye look by the I Am Ghost album cover. I loved this, I had this on my wall. I had a whole big photo of it on my wall. And I was like, I wanna be this girl. I want to look like her. This is how I want to do my makeup for prom and my wedding and this is what I'm going to look like because I am a punk emo girl for life. And so I'm going to live that dream and I'm going to do it but since my shirt has red tones in it instead of the pinky purple eyeshadows I'm going to do a little bit more red tones in it and make it really nice and pretty and smoky and modern and you know I want to do a less nice look. I want to live my emo dreams. First things first, we are taking our red eyeshadow. Again, not as perfect as the old one, but it will do the trick. So we're gonna go in, and I'm gonna take a fluffy brush, fluffy blending brush, and I'm gonna start working this all on my uh, on my crease. So I'm really gonna go in and just crease this everywhere. This red is the main focus of the look, so put it as w everywhere. I really love red eyeshadow. I've always like wanted to, I don't know, I have this, this drawn, like I'm just drawn to red eyeshadow and I always want to wear it almost every day and then I'm like, no cat, do other things. You can't just keep wearing red eyeshadow every day, but my inner emo comes out. I've just been so nostalgic for this time in my life that like, I don't want to be anything else but emo. <laughs> but I'm going to go in with a clean brush and just start blending it out. This one in general is not the easiest to blend out. It's the NYX Primal Color Red. And kind of looks a little hot pink, so I just put this as a base. And then I go in with a darker red. This is Stargazer's Deep Red. And I start going in with that to deepen up the crease a bit. To get a more red color. So right now my eyes are giving, definitely giving me Gerard Way Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge era. And honestly, I'm living for it. That is my favorite My Chem album. I know everyone is like, oh, but Black Parade is the most influential one. But like, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge is what just really sold me and was really what got me into was like the start of me getting into it. I remember watching in like sixth grade before I would go to school. And I'd watch the MTV like music video channel, and the first like um, the f it would always play Panic at the Disco, Fall Out Boy, and My Chemical Romance, which was like my first introduction ever to the emo scene and the emo music scene, and I was like obsessed. I thought all the boys were so cute, and I just wanted to date all of them and dress like them. I was just like, those are my people. And I remember I would steal my sister's CD and listen to it on the bus all the time and she would get so mad at me because I would always steal her My Chemical Romance CD. But I love it, Helena was just the most amazing song and as I said, I thought this was going to be the makeup I wore to prom and I swore that that was going to be the dress I wore to prom. And I wore a dress similar in my senior year, it was longer, not short, but I was like, I want her dress. And you know what? Comment down below if you want a Helena music video makeup tutorial because I'm totally down. I want to just keep being a dead girl. But I loved everything about that video and that time. And I missed that there was always pop punk on the radio. All the music was just so, so good. And I remember my first introduction to screamo music. And that was good old Hawthorne Heights. I had first heard Nikki FM and I was like in seventh grade. I'm outside of your window. And then, of course, I was introduced to the emo theme song, Ohio is for Lovers. Honestly, a classic. And I am so happy that I actually got to hear them perform that song when I was at Warp Tour one year. I had just caught it by accident. I didn't think I was going to catch their set because they were playing at the same time, I think, as Sleeping with Sirens. I may be wrong. I don't remember that who I was trying to catch that year. But I remember I was like, oh, it was like Sophie's Choice. Who am I going to watch? 
and I was able to catch High was for Lovers and My Life Was Made because that is a classic and one of my favorite songs of all time. Now I'm taking a deeper red shadow and I'm just going to start running this in through the crease more because I want to accentuate that darkness even more. It's really funny talking about music because like honestly my music taste is stuck in 2008 and to, well 2007-2008. I don't listen to new music very often unless it's like Porter Robinson. But basically everything is from that era and I don't branch out because it's just good. Why do I need to listen to anything else, honestly? My favorite albums probably from that time period in my life are definitely the album I was for Lovers is on. I can't think of the name right now. But I also had a version of that where it was just all the acoustic songs. So it was the whole album but everything was acoustic. That was beautiful to listen to. I always loved acoustic music. But there was something so good. Uh, a Lesson in Romantics, Mayday Parade. If honestly, like, if you had any breakup and you didn't listen to Miserable at Best, did you even have a breakup? Honestly, like, I still listen to that song when I'm heartbroken about boys. And then there is, of course, the good old-fashioned Pierce the Veil. Actually, you want to know a fun fact with Pierce the Veil? Uh, my intro, Hello Dollface, I was really obsessed with the song Yeah Boy and Dollface, and I used to be obsessed with the word Dollface, and I would like write it on my wrist every day, and I'd call everybody Dollface, and everything was Dollface, and that's why how I got my whole intro of Hello Dollface, it is because of Yeah Boy and Dollface, which is a, such a good emo song, but I think my favorite was uh, Stay Away From My Friends. I would listen to that song on repeat. Like, I remember I was on a road trip the summer that album came out and I literally just listened to it straight. Like, no stop, no stop. But if we're gonna talk about the music, the most influential music till I became emo, we're gonna talk about Escape the Fate. Because I remember when I was like in seventh grade and I was on MySpace and I would read, I would do those MySpace quizzes and it was like, emo love stories. And like, basically you would pick a number and it would give you a story and have a picture of a famous emo guy like Alex Evans or all the above, you know, all their names, all the MySpace famous people. They would have a whole list and there was a picture of them and it'd have a different name and they would take a whole love story about them being emo. I remember one of them had the thing and it was like, oh, and then you guys dance to the tune of, what song did we even dance to? I think, oh, The Ransom. Why we were dancing to The Ransom, that's really depressing, but okay. It's emo, I guess I understand. But I remember like that was, I'm like, what is The Ransom? Who has escaped the fate? What is this band? And I looked it up and there was just no going back from that. Everyone who knew me knew that I was in love with Escape the Fate and would hear about 24-7. Would hear about how I loved Ronnie Radke and he was the greatest musician of all time and the greatest singer and he sang to my soul because the song A Day I Left the Womb was the most impactful and helped me get through so much in my life. Still to this day, it is still one of the most important songs to me and I will forever love that album. Dying Is Really Fashion is just amazing and when they did the circus, he, well, following the verse of the tour where it was like a circus act, and it was like the first act was them performing the Dinosaurs fashion album and then them performing all music, I went because I had to hear it live. I didn't care. I paid for my friend to go so I didn't have to go by myself. I had to go to this concert and I just remember it was just amazing just finally hearing him sing those songs, those songs that were so important to me. Oh, it was just a beautiful moment. And then I left when he started playing his new album stuff because I just didn't know it. Great fan. But it was a very important night and I will forever cherish it. Now I'm going to go in with an eyeliner that I would have died for back in the day because it is a collab with Green Day. I loved Green Day. I still love Green Day. I saw them last year. It's been about a year since Billy Joe Armstrong touched this hand. Just gonna throw that out there again because why not? I have the Kat Von D and Green Day collab with the Basket Case Eyeliner, which is one of my favorite Green Day songs. It is a classic. So it is a smudgeable eyeliner, so I'm gonna use this on my waterline. I'm gonna put it all over my lid and blend it out because we need black eyeliner for emo. All right, now that I've laid out the eyeliner, I'm gonna start blending it out. Ugh. A band that I still listen to from those days, I mean, I still listen to all of it, but like I listen to their current music 
all the time because they just never stop producing great things and that is Panic at the Disco. I love Brendan Neary. He has the most angelic, beautiful voice of all time. Literally killing it every single time. But A Fever You Can't Sweat Off is a classic. It is still my favorite Panic album, even though Death of a Bachelor is bomb and fire and was my most listened to album of last year still. I love him and I really, really love that. He is still around making music that is just amazing. Saturday Night is such a bop. Everything is good. I just love, but I still love, a, like, A Fever You Can't Sweat Off. It is literally just a classic. If you're emo and you didn't listen to that album, that you're lying. That was your album. That's what you listened to. I'm going in with a black glittery eyeshadow because I couldn't find a matte black eyeshadow for some reason. I'm going in with this one. And I'm just going to start putting this where I put the black before and start blending it up into the red. The one, the eyeliner worked as the base, which, and this is the, going to smoke it out. And I'm going to tail it out like a cat eye. Because that is the emo thing to do. You want that shape. Oh my god, I'm literally dying. This is what I want it to look like. Another uh, definitely influential band from that time, which, oh my god, I still love them, is Bring Me the Horizon. I like used to tell people that Chelsea's Smile was the song of my life. I used to hardcore dance around my living room to the music video all the time. I swore I was like, my cat even loves Bring Me the Horizon. I always still want to own some drop dead clothing. I don't know how I have not bought myself an item from them. Always wanted it, never got it. I used to be such an a-hole about my clothes back then too. Cause like, I didn't want to wear anything that I thought posers were. I was really annoying about everything when I was emo. Cause it was like that whole thing where like, everything has to be like underground and you can't like the mainstream and oh my god, like I got pissed when like bands would get on the radio. Like, if my favorite band started playing on the radio, I couldn't listen to them anymore. Which was horrible. Which was bad, and I would only excuse like Fall Out Boy and Peg This Girl Might Come With Romance from that. But anything else? If it was on the radio, no. It was trash. It was garbage. You should have seen me the day I heard A Day To Remember on my local radio station. I was, I was livid. I couldn't even like, I was not a happy girl. And I'm gonna smudge, I was on my lower lash line as well. I remember though I made a deal with my dad and I was like, hey dad, if I mow the lawn, will you buy me clothes from Hot Topic? Because I literally only wanted to wear clothes from Hot Topic. Like I would get upset if they got me. The only thing I would be able to wear from other places was like skinny jeans. Like that would be the only thing. Cause like, oh no one's gonna be able to tell that I didn't get my jeans from Hot Topic. Like that was the only thing I would let them buy me from anywhere else. Like I hated. I mean, I only wore band tees and um, skinny jeans. That's my wardrobe. That was all I wore every day. And striped shirts. I loved striped t-shirts. I had like 10 billion pairs of like gray and black striped shirts. They're like my signature thing. And, oh my God. And hand warmers, the fingerless gloves. Oh my God, I love those. I would wear them every day, even though they looked horrendous with whatever I was wearing. And I remember I had these bright pink pants and they were my favorite pants of all time. And I would wear them with my Sky Eats airplane shirt that was like purple and pink because back in the day everything was like neon colors with black. Like that was the look. That was when I was trying to be more seen though than emo, I guess. And then there was a time I wanted to be more punk than emo and I had a bunch of plaid pants. Should I do a style history video? Let me know down below in the comments if you want to see that or a hair history. But I, uh, I just like, I don't know. I was so annoying, like especially with Abby Dawn. I swear to God, if my parents brought me home Abby Dawn, I would never wear it, and I was just the worst, the absolute worst. And now I just wear clothes from Walmart and the dollar dollar stores and thrift stores because I'm cheap. Now we're moving on to eyeliner, the most important thing to any emo girl or boy or anyone in general. Eyeliner is important. Uh, but back then I would try to use a cold pencil liner to do this and I always wondered why I could never get a cat eye right. Why couldn't it look like the girls online? Why? It's really funny because like how I got into makeup was looking up 
emo makeup tutorials online. Now I'm actually going to stop talking for this because I don't think I can actually talk and do this. So let's just go real quick. Alright, so I extended the inner corner with a little bit more of a cat eye because that's just a very emo scene girl thing to do is very important in the look to have that. So I did, I added a little bit of that and I smoked a little bit more red under my eye because why not? And I actually think I'm going to add a little bit more because I'm crazy. We're going to finish off the eyes with some mascara and some lashes. You know, I didn't even wear mascara back then. Who was I? Like, I literally just thought black eyeliner was acceptable. And sometimes the occasional bright blue eyeshadow or bright red eyeshadow, and that was it. Or black. I would wear black eyeshadow as well. But no mascara, because who does that? Who needs to blend their eyelashes in with their tons of black eyeshadow and eyeliner? Honestly, you really can't even see it, so I guess there was a point. Like, saving money. I used to use, like, Dollar Tree eyeliner all the time to try to do everything. I always had that and I had my red eyeshadow from Hot Topic, my powder, and that was it. That's all I wore. So I'm going to add a little bit of highlight to the brow bone to finish up this eye look. Just going to take a peachy color and I'm just going to run that through. Oh, the other corner. I remember I always wanted to wear false lashes. I used to see all the really cool emo girls on MySpace wear them, but I just personally never could get the hang of it back in the day. And it kind of actually scared me, and it's crazy to believe because now I wear false lashes every day. So I want to wear a pair of MySpace girl lashes, and so I'm going to wear my super extravagant drag lashes that I wear for this look. You know, you probably won't even be able to see them with all the black eyeliner I'm wearing. Back then, my like fashion inspo was definitely Audrey Kitching. I wanted to be her so bad. I wanted her pink hair, which I finally got the pink hair after being promised many summers by my parents that, yeah, this is the summer. We're going to take you get your hair done. We're going to get it dyed pink just like you want. Yep, this is the summer. It was never the summer. Actually, one time, my mom came home with hair dye, and she's like, I bought you your hair dye. I was like, oh, we're going to go pink? I'm going to go pink? No, we bought blue. I was like, okay, that's not what I wanted, but I guess we'll go blue. And so I thought, okay, I'll be bright blue. That'll be fun. It's whatever. Like, that was my friend's color, but okay, I'll go blue. And then my dad was like, oh, well, I'm not going to use the bleach on your hair, so we're going to dye it over your brunette hair. My hair was navy blue. It looked okay, but, like, it fried my hair. It was awful. It looked so bad. But I finally got that pink hair. I finally got Audrey Kitching's hair. She was like my number one. I oh, I really loved uh, Haley Williams. I loved her style. Sierra Custerback. Loved her. I loved all of them. But I mainly just wanted to be the emo girls that I would look at pictures of on We Heart It and Tumblr. <sighs> Those were the good old days. You guys remember when Tumblr first came out? Like I've had the same Tumblr blog for about 10 years now, and I went all the way back just to get inspo for this video, and I was so whiny, oh my god. All right, let's go contour and then we'll talk about that. First one, contour, which is something I never did back then. There was no such thing as like this. Who? No one shaped their face. You were just a big, pale blob. Half the time you didn't even see your face in photos, so there was no point. But we're gonna cut these cheeks. So come my cheeks and blend my eyes. But yeah, I went back on my Tumblr and I was so emo. There's literally a blog post of me complaining about coming home and like seeing that my grandma did my laundry and she shrunk all my skinny jeans. Like I was pissed. Like it was like a three page rant post about how none of my pants fit anymore. How was, what was I gonna wear to school the next day? I had no jeans, I had nothing. What the heck? My god, it was like the worst. And there was like other ones where I was just like, ooh, these girls are telling me I'm not seeing emo enough to date my boyfriend and I'm so sad and oh, I love Ronnie Radke. Like I was like, oh my god, how did you have friends? You were so annoying. I don't get it. It's fine. 
but there were some good things like it was fun to go back and like look at pictures of me and my old friends that I used to hang out with high school and just like seeing how much I've evolved and changed as a person like it's really crazy because I am definitely not the same as I was back then but I still am so nostalgic for those days like I actually miss a lot of those people I miss like the scene I miss having a local music scene like we have like nothing in my town anymore I remember going to shows and like things and like we just don't have that so it was a lot of fun like I remember there was a post of me complaining how my parents would let me go to a house show and I was so mad because everybody was there and my favorite local band was playing oh my god I was so whiny and angsty and I love it all right so now that I'm all contoured up and got some shape to this lifeless face I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of red blush. I know this isn't very emo, but I'm sorry. I can't not have blush. Ugh, it's just, it's impossible. And of course, we're going to add highlighter because it is 2018, guys. If you do a look without highlighter, it is a crime on the internet. So we'll go in with that same peachy highlight we were before. So back in the day, I did not use lipstick or any type of lip product until probably like the end of my sophomore year. So uh, I don't know what I really would have wore. I know I, I had a black, but I feel like that was too gothic. I, like I would not wear a black lipstick. So I think a dark red is the perfect thing to do or like a super nude, but I think it's a dark red will look better with this eye look. Now the makeup portion is done, but you really cannot stop without finishing the hair. You think I'm just going to go with just plain straight hair? We got to tease this bitch. Oh god, I can't believe I'm doing this. Okay. Here we go. Get your handy dandy teasing comb and just back comb. Oh my god, I'm sorry hair. I am so sorry. Now, I didn't do this all the time because I really honestly never really mastered it. It only looked good in some pictures, but I never really, I don't have the layers for it anymore either. I remember I used to get my hair cut and I'd always bring pictures with like the girls with the poofy like hair and layers and they're like, you know, like this is going to be your hair is really, really short and you're going to have to wear like extensions. And I was like, no, no, you can do it with just my hair. Wait, I don't have, I'm not allowed to get extensions. My parents won't buy extensions. So I never really got the full hair I always wanted. I did have the crazy choppy, I always kept my hair short. Like literally my hair was like always to here. I never got the hair extensions and I always just had short hair. Which is fine, which is fine because honestly it saved my already horribly damaged hair from this every day of my life. So I don't know if I want to tease it more. My hair already is like damaged. No, no, I got to live my best seen life. I need to tease everything. Oh, uh, back comb, back comb, back comb. There we go. Go back in with our hair clip from before. And clip back our side bangs. Oh my god, I am living for this. I literally am. I have some hair extensions to add other little colors though. The clip-ins, I did have these. I remember I had a pink pair that I would wear all the time in just photos. So I'd never wear them in public, I would just wear them in my MySpace photos. And they looked actually really horrible. But in pictures they looked okay because you know everything was overexposed anyway. So, so I have a black one here, I'm gonna slide in. My god, I wish I had a coontail on. Even though I hated coontails, like I never wanted a coontail. Ever. My friend had one though. She had a coontail. And we're gonna finish off the look with the piercings. There was always three piercings that I always wanted. One, I don't know if I'll be able to achieve that, but I won. I always wanted spider bites. So I have these fake piercings. Let's hope I can get them on my lip. Piercing. I wanted spider bites, but I only have the one. And I always wanted my septum pierced. 
and I actually attempted to pierce my septum once in high school with a sewing needle in the bathroom and I got it completely through and it was a lot of fun and then I lost the hole and couldn't put the jewelry in so I went through all of that for nothing good job cat and the emo transformation is complete I am now a hundred percent my full happy emo self this is literally my final form of what I always dreamed Katrina corruption would look like this is the dream and I love it I feel so cute right now actually and I don't know maybe I should bring back the emo look okay not really but I really love how this is turning out and I'm just really happy with how I look in general. It was really fun to get nostalgic again because honestly being emo was some of the best times of my life. It was just a lot of fun to just do whatever I wanted and not care, which I still do, but with different fashion. But the music has always been important to me. The whole scene was just great and like I wouldn't be Donut Princess XO if I wasn't Katrina Corruption first. So I'm really happy with how this turned out because I am an emo kid. Not conforming as can be. You being not conforming too if you look just like me. My god, who remembers that song? Comment down below if you remember that song and knowing all the lyrics to it even though it was making fun of you. But you know, you, yeah. I loved it and I just love, I don't know, I miss, kind of missed being emo. It's, this was a lot of fun and a really big trip down memory lane. So you guys comment down below what your favorite emo music was or if you had emo style icons or just what you miss most about the MySpace days because I really miss MySpace. I, you know, PC for PC everybody. Comment down below. Let me know if you enjoyed this. If you would like to see Katrina Corruption come back again for any other videos. I hope you guys stay lovely. Bye!